Tonight, we're gonna test the ASI Air Plus that I set up on this telescope in a previous video, and we're actually gonna use it under the night sky. Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here, and welcome back to my balcony. So tonight, we're gonna try the ASI Air Plus and see if it actually works. And really, one of the first things that I want to try is the polar alignment, because this polar alignment is going to be very important if I'm taking this little thing on a trip um, and to work like to take to do imaging remotely and it's one of the big you know advantages of this over uh, something like Nina that runs on a Windows computer is that it's small light uh, takes 12 volt and it will actually distribute 12 volt to the other elements of the setup and that really means that you can use it it's really perfect for um, a setup that is mobile. And so when a setup is mobile, you want to be able to polar, polar align it easily. From the previous video, just so you saw the settings, I have all of the DC ports uh, that are uh, turned on. We are connected to uh, the main camera. Uh, we have the 178mm as um, a guider. Uh, I haven't actually uh, focused it yet, so we'll see how that works. We have some uh, telescope settings, including the uh, exposure time which we have at uh, five seconds for now and i put the guide rate at 0 0.9 times because that's what i usually use so we'll see um, if that uh, works we have no filter wheel and in the eaf um, i have set my um, autofocus to run every one hour uh, on filter change even though we don't have a filter wheel and we have the step, step size to 30 and somewhere I also set the meridian flip to happen 10 minutes after the meridian which hopefully should work but anyway um, let's first go in here and we're going to select PA for polar alignment and it tells me to set up the scope and mount as shown which is pretty much what we have we want to connect the main camera and the mount, which is done. And we want to confirm that the plate solve works in preview. Okay, so I'm gonna go to preview. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see if, if it doesn't work, I'll have to turn off that light. Uh, but plate solving, here it is. Okay, failed, of course, because I need to take an exposure first. Okay, so you don't, but we're gonna take uh, maybe a 10 second exposure. And actually, I'm going to go uh, inside the mount and I'm going to turn the tracking on just so that we have, uh, uh, I'm sure that I will get a decent exposure. So we're going to take a, a 10 second exposure so that uh, we can actually see that uh, plate solve is working. So we're going to click on plate solve. Wow, <laughs> that was fast. Wow, okay. Uh, that's good to know. Uh, so maybe for the pro alignment, the mount needs to be not tracking. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, we're going to click, we're on the polar alignment. I'm going to set the exposure time to 5 seconds, mm, 10 seconds, mm, 5 seconds. Let's try 5 seconds. And I'm going to cl click play. And we'll see what happens. So right now it's taking an exposure. Okay, it played solved. Uh, I'll click next. Okay, let's... Huh, it looks like it might actually be working. Uh, we're starting to get clouds. Okay, we're shooting again. Okay, let's go. And it's telling me how far away we are, 20 arc minutes away apparently, which you know makes sense because the last since the last time uh, I moved the telescope a bit. Uh, so uh, we'll see. So first it tells me that I want to turn uh, right a little bit so let's do that i'm going to refresh i see so it seems to be actually working okay refresh succeeded we're much closer at four arc minutes okay we're at three arc minutes you know i'm not going to fight with the mount especially when i see clouds coming over all over the place uh, so i just want to uh, to say like okay it seems that we get something pretty nice in terms of the uh, alignment and uh, i'm just gonna stop it I'm also going to go to the mount and tell it for now to go to the home position uh, so that hopefully it's not going to be like confused when we, uh, we actually start the session. So this is really cool because um, so 
on the main preview screen there, I can click that search bar and then we have a list of items with little previews that are in, in color. And that's actually really, really cool. This is super convenient. And that looks like uh, the area around Seder. So I'm gonna select that. I guess this green button. Oh, it's loose there directly, okay. Oh, and it's doing a plate solving. Wow. It just does it. I'm, wow. Wow, I'm impressed. Wow, target is centered? Gee, that was fast. Wow, seriously? Wow. Okay, uh, yeah. Wow, okay. Let's try the autofocus. So, oh wait, no, I'm not gonna focus manually. I am going to go to, um, where was it? Focus. And uh, I think it was saying that I need to press the start button. Then I think I can select an area with a bright star. And let me try to, okay, so we can just like look at, we can do the focus manually. If I click uh, autofocus there, I'm gonna click play and we're gonna see if that works. Wow, it seems like it's doing a multi-star focusing. Well, it's actually building the curve. Wow, this, okay, it's impressive. And it's impressive that it's managing to do that with a star that was so far out of focus. And from what I hear, the focuser did a back and forth right now. And so it feels to me that it's actually doing uh, the overshoot backlash compensation rather than just a, a, a definite value, which is absolutely great. Oh, wow, what is it doing? It's actually doing a precise second focusing run. Autofocus succeeded. Wow. Guys. Wow. Like, seriously? Okay, I can go back. And then I can go back to preview. We can take uh, a five second exposure. Like I'm, I am shocked. I am shocked. This is really good. I am shocked and like really shocked. Okay, uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, okay, so what would happen? So I can see like, okay, let's tap on me for guiding. Okay, uh, tap here to set the exposure time of the guide camera, got it. Tap here to start the image lo looping, okay. And tap, tap here to start the guide, view the guide curve. Uh, this, guys, oh my word, this is really well done. I'm gonna go for uh, two seconds. Uh, is there a way to have multi, multi stars will be used for guiding except, wow, this is really well done. Okay, so let's take exposures. And now I, I can actually uh, check the focus. Okay, I think we're, we're in focus, so I am going to start guiding. It's using multi-star guiding by default. And now it's doing this, the usual stuff from PhD2. Wow. Yeah, this goes m far beyond my, my initial impressions when I didn't like the activation or that kind of stuff. Like once it's set up, this is hugely impressive. Uh, there are some things that are uh, less impressive is that you need to kind of know your focuser ahead of time, just like Nina in a way, um, to, to tell what the coarse size and the uh, fine size for the focus step should be. You need to know your backlash to some extent, but again, it's the same in Nina. Huh. I am hugely impressed. So we're going through the uh, uh, the actual calibration. Okay, so you see the guiding like went off the trail here simply because I was moving on the roof balcony. Uh, but without that, we are in a much better position and this should work really well. Uh, so now what, I'll go, what, what I'm going to do is we want to go back to the main screen. How do I go back to the main screen? There, there, okay. Now we're back to the main screen. You can see I am still not used to this. Now we're gonna go inside the plan. Still more clouds rolling in, but, but, but let's keep hope. I'm gonna go in plan and we're gonna add a target. Uh, we're gonna t call this test. 
Uh, this target is what we want. Okay. That's the target we want. And then we can say that we want light, light frames. My exposure time will be 60 seconds. We'll repeat that like 300 times. I wish... We, ah, ah. Okay. You can set your own number. Because if you're limited to 300, for me, that's not enough with all of the short exposures uh, that I take. Bin 1. And I can say OK. And go back. And I could have a second target. Dude, that is absolutely amazing. OK, and so how do I start this plan? setting we want to start guiding we want the auto meridian flip we want to start now and when it's done we'll want to turn off the cooler go home uh, piece of sh uh, no uh <laughs> position uh ef ef back to zero position no shutdown asi air no this okay wow i I'm, I'm still impressed i am really impressed so if i click here it's going to start the plan Start guiding, auto meridian flip. Okay, so it's doing the original centering. So it can really absolutely do multi-target in a single session, which would, which would be absolutely great in dark zones. Now it's waiting for guide. And I've set it up so that it should remember the guide calibration. Waiting for settling. And it's shooting. It's actually shooting. Uh, yeah, let's wait for the first exposure to be done. Oh, wow. Dude, this is so cool. Oh, wow. And, and like the stars are really in focus. Um, yeah, I moved. So now the, uh, the guiding is off the charts. But oh, wow. I, I am. I am hugely impressed. Okay, uh, we have one more thing coming up. The meridian flip is in six minutes, or the meridian is in six minutes, which means uh, in 16 minutes, we should be seeing the flip. So we'll see if the flip actually works. And I've already tested that uh, the uh, network, the Wi-Fi signal actually goes all the way down to my living room. So I can absolutely use this from the living room. I am very, very impressed there's no other way of saying it um i did not expect that the auto focusing was really good the plate solving was really fast the polar alignment was easy uh the original the initial setup was a bit painful uh, but you know doable um and uh, and i'll see in a few minutes uh the meridian flip <laughs> Okay guys, uh, quick from the future. Uh, I just actually ran into something that I do not like. Um, it stopped imaging once it hit the meridian. And I'm not sure whether there's a way to change that. I thought it would keep imaging until 10 minutes past the meridian, but it doesn't look to be the case. It's telling me that it's flipping in 550 seconds. Uh, the imaging is uh, paused but it, it's just waiting for the flip so that means that in my settings i will change that afterwards but in the uh, meridian flip setting i will want to change that to like maybe one minute um yeah i am uh, uh that's a bit that's actually quite disappointing um i i i, I hope there's a way to uh, to change that to keep imaging past the meridian rather than um because it's the best part of the night it's the best part of the target when you're near the meridian and i'm used to that in nina and i i thought that it would do the same thing it doesn't that's uh, a bit too bad also uh, i noticed some pretty cool stuff like the uh auto uh, uh the annotate it will actually show you Seder uh, ngc 6910 this is super cool although i find like some little issue there i wish i wish that uh, we could be doing this um this we could keep imaging until we get to the actual flip even if you we've gone to the meridian and i understand it's probably like to um to save the mount and the from like crashing into the tripod but i wish we had a bit more uh, settings in that front because if i know that um 
I can go beyond the meridian by a certain amount of degrees, then I want to be able to use those degrees efficiently. Um, yeah, so we'll uh, hopefully maybe one day it will come in a future upgrade when you can set basically your horizon limits and your meridian limits for your mount. I would actually feel more comfortable uh, being able to set that in ASI Air Plus, knowing that my mount uh, will never hit the tripod. Um, which I think is really the default of what ASI Air Plus has programmed, but it would be cool if I could override the default. Okay, we are flipping momentarily. Let's see if this actually works. Okay, it's starting off pretty well. And we're lucky the clouds haven't covered completely the target yet. There's, the, the target is actually in a hole in the clouds right now. Okay, it's solving after the meridian flip and it's immediately recentering this. <sighs> Again, it's really impressive and very well done. Okay, target is centered and let's see if the guiding will uh, keep working. And it seems like the guiding is working and we are shooting again. Yep, this, this is a really good product. I know that there are other products like StellarMate that do something similar uh, or uh, what's the name, uh, Astroberry, um, which do something similar. Even so, it's a, it's a all-in-one solution that just works once you've set it up. Uh, it's, um, it's very impressive. Let's see how the first image after the Meridian flip comes out. Yeah, and it comes out really well, uh, <laughs> despite the clouds. Anyway, back to Quiff from the past. I, 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 I didn't expect this. It's, this is really good. But you can tell I'm impressed and this is not because I got it, I got it for free. And this stays on this scope. Uh, this will stay on this scope going forward. And then I can just take that to a darker area. I just need to do proper cable management and then I'm, I'm all done, done. Ugh, this is hugely impressive. Uh, but with that, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to show in this video, like the, the first steps of a beginner to the ASI Air Plus or and the ASI Air in general, in terms of using that, uh, uh, that system. And I'm very impressed. Uh, I'm, uh, in French, I would say, je suis bluffé, uh, which means like I really, I didn't expect it uh, to be that good. I mean, there's a few disadvantages in terms of the configuration. You don't have like the advanced sequencer from Nina, obviously. Um, you don't have dome control, but it's not for that kind of stuff. The biggest disadvantage, I would say, is that you are locked into the ZW ecosystem once you have the ASI Air Plus. But with something that provides this level of functionality, <laughs> yeah, lock me, man. So yeah, the, these were my first impressions first use of uh, this system. Uh, I will have, I will be using the system more going forward. Still, I hope like my stumbles and my issues and how I went about using this ASI Air Pro uh, will give a good idea about how to use this, how you can set up for your original uh, setup if you're new to the ASI Air because it's really like uncut from a beginner's perspective. I am wowed by this product, as you can tell. Uh, and I hope that this video uh, was useful. If you like this kind of video, uh, tips and tricks about astrophotography, uh, new equipment reviews, um, this kind of stuff, feel free to go down below, click that subscribe button, click that like button, the bell icon, leave a comment. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think about the, AS, the AS, ASI Air. I, yeah, I'm very surprised that it is working so well. And that's probably because I waited for the third generation of the product. But uh, yeah, again, color me very impressed. Um, but uh, yeah, with that, uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, whenever you can, to look up at the stars. And I'll see you next time.